Cryogenic Winter is regarded as one of the more difficult mod scenarios in Project Zomboid. With temperatures reaching almost as low as negative 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, it forces you to play the game much differently and more efficiently than most people are used to. So, I decided to survive 500 days and document my experience with the mod. For settings, I kept everything on the Apocalypse preset with the only tweaks being that power and water shut off as instant because that's what the mod recommends, and I have transmission set to saliva only because that's just how I most enjoy playing the game. I'm also running the Become Desensitized mod, but set the minimum kills to 5,000 and the max to 10,000, meaning I have my work cut out for me. If you don't know, the mod defaults to 500 kills as the minimum and 2,000 as the maximum, so I think adjusting to the scaled kills that I put in place should be a pretty big challenge. One last thing. This series consists of over 250 hours of raw footage that needed to be edited down to 5 episodes, which obviously takes a ton of time and effort to do. All I ask is that if you find yourself enjoying the video, please drop a like. It's super easy to do and helps a ton. Alright, I think I bored you well enough. Let's get into it. I started off day one the same way that everyone does, by looting my spawn house. After finding some warmer clothing and a pipe wrench, I made my way out into West Point to get a feel for how difficult this was really gonna be. Not only was I off to a good start from spawn, but I also came across a digital watch on my second zombie kill. And while looting the next house, found a gun case with a pistol and a box of ammo. If you're thinking, how could this possibly get any better, I also found a generator knowledge magazine in the house's bookshelf. Even after all of that, there's only one more piece that could top this, and that would be if I happened to find a survivor house, which would help me get some solid weapons. Now, if someone wanted to crunch the numbers on all this and tell me the odds of getting this lucky on day one, please send it over because this is absolutely ridiculous. I'm coming up with 32.33 uh, repeating, of course, percentage of survival. All things considered, this turned out to be one of the best starts I've ever had in Project Zomboid, which gave me a really good feeling for how the rest of this challenge should go. Anyway, after grabbing a couple items and marking the house location on my map for later, I wandered around the city looking for a quiet area to set up my first base while also getting used to the fact that it was in the negatives while in July. The big issue I was running into was the fact that I chose claustrophobic, so I can't really sleep in many of the houses or bedrooms since I get panicked when indoors. Because of this, I found myself in a farm shed with an open siding. If you don't know, Project Soundboy doesn't register this as an open area and thinks of it as being indoors, because technically, you're inside. Even though a whole side of the building isn't there, and it would just be the same temperature as it would be 10 feet to the south, but I'll take it as long as I can sleep here. On my second day, I woke up super late because I had to wait until I became ridiculously tired so that I could sleep on the floor, which brings us to the point where I stay up until 5 or 6 a.m., crash, and then wake up at 4.30 in the evening like some dude who still lives at home with his mom. With what little time I had left in the day, I looted the nearby houses for any useful items like food, magazines, and really just general supplies. On day three, I decided to focus on clearing out the nearby area since I was sleeping with an entire wall missing and was risking getting bit any time I went to sleep. I also think now is a good time to talk about the weather here. Right now, it's not really having much of an impact on me. I went with outdoorsmen as a trait and have pretty warm clothing on. It's also close to 50 degrees Fahrenheit indoors, which is enough to warm me back up if I do get too cold from being outside. This will obviously change as we get closer to winter, but for now, it's not all that difficult. As I was clearing out some zombies, I did manage to level up my short blunt skill, which was really nice to see, actually. I tried to end the day by doing some sprints across the field, but ended up attracting a nearby horde, which forced me to take them out as well. It's honestly probably a good thing to have happen, considering how close they were to the shed anyway, so I'll take it. On day 4, I decided to take a chance and head back into the city with the goal of reaching the gas station. I chose to travel light, only taking some short blunt weapons, a couple items of food, and some water. I needed to find gas cans so that I could turn on a generator and fuel up a car to get me to my base destination for the winter. More on that later. For now, I need to reach the gas station. I decided to take the forest route and link up on the highway, which would keep me out of the center of the city and let me hit up the larger gas station which would have less zombies hanging around. While on my perilous journey, I managed to level up both my sneaking and light footed. Made it to the gas station around 3.30 and got to work clearing out the zombies in the area.
After that, I got to work looting the gas station. I didn't find any gas cans, but when searching the car outside, found it had a minuscule amount of gasoline in it, so I dumped out a water bottle, siphoned the fuel, and headed back home, making it back to my base around midnight. The next step is to get a generator back down to the gas station without it bogging me down. I woke up around noon and said fuck it, grabbed a Jenny, and headed back to the gas station. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, and I made it to the gas station that evening, dropped off the generator, and started the work of re-clearing the zombies that had accumulated nearby. After cleaning up, I walked over and unpacked my bottle of gasoline, but couldn't pour it into the generator. And this was the moment when I realized that you couldn't use a glass bottle to fill generators with gasoline, or anything for that matter. The glass bottles can hold gasoline, but you can't use them to fill any items. At this point, it was getting late, and I figured I'd probably be spending the night here, so instead of heading back, I decided to push into the warehouse parking lot across the street and started working my way through the zombies so that I could check for gas in the abandoned cars. This actually wasn't the worst thing in the world, since I ended up killing a cop and was able to loot a double holster and a shotgun off the corpse. And this is where the gamble really pays off. So I was able to find a car in about 80% condition with almost a full tank of gas. The only issue being that I'd have to smash a window and hotwire the car before the horde across the street walked over. Again, this ended up being way easier than I thought it would be. I scooped up the Jenny and the ice freezer outside before heading back to the barn. Day 6 was focused on looting some of the houses in the nearby neighborhood. I'd like to move into the city, but my skills aren't really high enough and I don't want to risk just walking into the middle of West Point so early, especially when the helicopter event hasn't even triggered yet. This is one of those cases where taking my time is going to work better for me in the long term, no matter how much I hate it in the moment. My main priority right now is to get enough food and gear to survive the early game. The sooner I do that, the sooner I can move out to my primary base location. Now much like any other American, I found that the public schools seems to be the best area to focus my combat skills. After putting on my special helmet, I got to work looting the library, which saw me walking away with a ton of recipe magazines and several skilling books. I spent around 2 hours looting the rest of the school before deciding to head back to base. I was able to get back without drawing any hordes, and got to work raiding through all the magazines that I'd collected. The next morning, I packed up some of my gear, loaded the car, and set off for what would become my primary base location going forward at least during the winter months. Of course, as soon as I get in my car, I trigger the helicopter event. I kept driving and just pray that I didn't pull half of West Point out to my destination. When I arrived at the mansions, I picked up one closest to the pond and started clearing it out. After hearing some thuds upstairs, I got jump scared by what I can only describe as the world's wackiest orgy gone wrong. After clenching my butt cheeks together harder than Harvey Weinstein in prison, I managed to pull them outside and take them out. Until I walked back into the house and a zombie literally spawned on top of me. After securing the house, I unloaded the car and once again got hit with a friendly reminder that you can't fill a generator with a bottle of gasoline. Anyway, I headed back to my shed and grabbed a ton of my junk before heading back to my car. This probably wasn't the brightest move, and I ended up spending a ton of time trying to bait zombies around with the car, and then hop out, loot the items I dropped, hop back in the car, and keep going. Which ended up with me almost dying from a neck laceration. I spent day 9 clearing out the other two houses. The building that I had cleared out yesterday had a huge flaw with it, that being that the house has no fireplace, which is going to keep me alive during the fall and winter months. You see, right now, it's about 15 degrees Fahrenheit during the daytime, which isn't horrible as long as I keep all of my clothing on. 
but during the winter, it's going to be something like minus 170, 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and clothes aren't going to stand a chance. I chose the far back mansion, spent a good hour or so clearing out the interior before beginning the process of shifting all of my loot over to this house. Oh, it's also snowing out now. Now that the pond house is wrapped up, I turn my focus to the final house in the cul-de-sac. Only thing worth noting is when I checked out the laundry room, I found a ton of weapons just sitting in one of the containers, so those are mine now. Turns out, basically every room in the house had weapon storages in it. Something must have been bugged with the loot spawns, or I stumbled onto a psychopath's house. As funny as that would be, I'm leaning towards loot just being fucked here since there were food spawning in the bathroom, but either way, I'll take it. Mainly because I found an AK-47 in one of the upstairs bedrooms where I also found a gas mask and a hockey helmet. You know, maybe this was a psychopath's house after all. And I decided that the best course of action here was to take everything I owned and dump it on the floor in one giant pile. From there, I could start sifting through it to see what should go where. And as much as I'd love to get started on that today, I still have a ton of shit at the shed that I need to go grab. And this ended up taking the entire day to wrap up. After creating a massive pile of random oddities in my living room, I spent quite literally the entire day organizing my new base. I'll show some of it sped up because it's strangely therapeutic to me to decorate and organize my house. Day 12 was a wash. I woke up late in the afternoon and spent the day screaming around the property trying to drown any zombies in the area. When none showed up, I just went back to base. The next day, I geared up and headed down the road with the goal of grabbing as many ripped sheets as I could find. Basically, I just walked on the road a ways until I found a couple small groups to fight. Grabbed a couple sheet ropes that I could use to bundle logs, and then a ton of ripped sheets that I was going to use to build log walls. I spent the next four days cutting down trees so that I could start working on building out my fortress. The plan was to use log walls to fence in the perimeter and then build out a couple platforms that I could use to walk along the walls with. Before I started building, I decided to take a day and pound out the first carpentry skill book so that I could farm some carpentry levels early on. With that taken care of, the next two days would be spent working on building out the back sections of the wall. I would have liked to continue this and just complete it all in one sitting, but after two days, I'd leveled up my carpentry enough to pound out the second skilling book, which I spent the entirety of day 21 reading. I would have liked to just hop right back in and keep working on the fencing, but unfortunately, due to poor planning and the fact that I was running out of food, I decided to head back into the city, specifically the Gigamart. After reaching the parking lot, I took out some of the zombies hanging around out front and headed in to start my looting run. Everything went smoothly at first, but very quickly devolved into how many zombies can I kill before getting too exhausted to continue. Truth be told, I spent more time fighting than even considering looting. By 5pm, I was exhausted, and I hadn't even started looting the place since there were still way too many zombies in the area. Decided to head back to my shed for the night and continue tomorrow morning. For my long-term subscribers, we hit the moment you've been waiting for on the morning of day 23 when I decided to Paul Walker a light post on my way back to the Gigamart. Round 2 of the grocery store saw about what you'd expect. There were a ton of zombies hanging around out front, so I spent a good few hours taking care of them before I was able to load up my car to capacity with food. After getting back to base that evening, I restocked my kitchen and passed that on the couch. I woke up late the next day and decided to just shove butter into my mouth to help with adding on some extra weight. Then I spent the remainder of the day reading skill books. I know, super exciting. So we have food now, but no ripped sheets. I chose to head back into West Point to desecrate the bodies of zombies that I'd killed in the previous few days. It's also worth noting here that I had replaced my zombie audio with zombie cues from The Last of Us for some other videos that I was working on and decided to keep it in the game. So if you're sitting here like, why do I hear clickers in Project Zomboid? That's why. Some people love it, some hate it, 
Personally, I think it's a nice touch and changes things up a bit. By around noon, it became apparent that I was overmatched and undergeared, so I decided to cut my losses on the day and head back to base. When I went upstairs to drop my clothes off, I discovered that I already gathered something like 600 rip sheets. This is what happens when you take a few weeks off of recording and come back without rereading your notes. Having effectively wasted a day, I picked up the first aid skill book and spent the rest of the day knocking that out. I spent the next three days working through all of the logs that I'd stashed, almost finishing the outer wall. And at this point, I've been allocating way too much time to the walls, and not enough time doing fun shit. So today I headed into West Point with the goal of looting the warehouses and self-storage locations to find a sledgehammer, which I could then use to loot the gun shop to the north. On my way into the city, I almost fucked myself by driving through an absolutely massive horde on the outskirts of one of the neighborhoods. I actually found two sledgehammers in the warehouse, which was incredibly lucky even for my standards, so I grabbed them and anything else that held any value to me, loaded up the car, and headed back to base to drop everything off. When I got back to base, I planned on making a workbench before realizing that I needed metalworking level 2, so I'll put that on the back burner for now because I have a pretty easy way to get that whenever I'm ready to throw away a few days. The next morning, I geared up and headed out to the gun store. On the way there, I couldn't help but realize how crowded the streets of West Point were. We'd have to take care of that at some point, hopefully with the guns we were going to grab today. I also passed a Humvee at around noon and made a mental note of where that was so I could come back and scoop it when I was ready. When I pulled into the gun store, I found it completely overrun with Kentucky's finest and got to work doing what everyone else wishes they could do to the people of Kentucky. Now if you're from Kentucky and you find yourself in the comments already typing out your misspelled death threats, please don't. I'll save you the time. I'm not going to read them. It's okay. Move along. And I ended up pulling in a massive haul after breaking into the gun shop that evening. We're talking hundreds of boxes of ammo, AR-15s, shotguns, Desert Eagles, pythons, the whole nine yards. I made it back to my safe house early in the morning of day 31 and dumped all the guns and ammo on the floor before knocking out. The following day, I woke up late in the afternoon, so I spent the day just organizing all the guns and ammo. Nothing too exciting. I have something to touch on before we continue. While talking with some members in the Discord, I was made aware that there is an easy mode and a hard mode for Cryogenic Winter. There's actually a normal mode now, but at the time I was recording this, there was only an easy and a hard mode. And apparently, I've been playing on easy mode, which explains why I'm still able to function outside with a normal hoodie and jacket. So I tweaked the settings and enabled hard mode. From my limited understanding, it drops the temperature another 20 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit with some added difficulty in the winter as well. Getting into my first day in hard mode, it was an obvious jump in difficulty. For starters, hypothermia is an actual threat now even when indoors. Because of this, my number one priority became finding padded clothing. There's a bargain clothes not too far away that I actually tend to use as my go-to safe house location in multiplayer games, so I hopped in the car and began making my way there. This actually became incredibly difficult as a ton of zombies followed me into the store, where I was forced to kite them around while firing my Desert Eagle into them. It became apparent very early on that I fucked up and should have brought a shotgun instead of a pistol. That being said, guns in general were screw me since all I was doing was attracting more zombies to the area. Add on to that the fact that I was freezing so I couldn't even swing a hammer, and you've got a disaster waiting to happen. After buying time for myself to warm up, I kited the massive horde into the wooded area to the west which allowed me to circle back to the clothing store and begin looting. In true PZ fashion, I managed to find all the clothing that I didn't need, and none of the items that I actually needed, which sucked. Before heading back to base, I siphoned some fuel from my car and used that to power the generator that I'd brought along so that I could hit up the gas station nearby. What I completely forgot to factor in was the fact that hypothermia will kill you if you give it the chance, and I was far from the base when it hit. What followed was an incredibly panicked drive back to base where I drove a barely functional vehicle knowing that any wreck might kill my engine, effectively leaving me to freeze to death. On day 33, I grabbed a ton of logs from outside and threw them in the fireplace. From there, I decided to spend a day to see what the weather would be like indoors, and if I could survive in the house as is, or if I was going to need more gear and material. My big fear right now is, if this is summer, how difficult is winter going to be? Looks like the play will be to do some workouts before I go to sleep, and that should tide me over for the night. The next morning, I hopped in my car to head back to the unlooted gas station for some more fuel when I turned the corner and wrecked my first car of the playthrough. Luckily for me, there was another nearby that I was optimistic I could fix up if given enough time. 
They ran back to base, grabbed some mechanic tools, and headed back to start training on the car wreck nearby. After getting the new vehicle up and running, I decided to spend some time clearing out the massive horde that had accumulated nearby, which also gave me an excuse to level up my aiming and reloading a bit. By the end of the day, I'd hit aiming 3 and reloading 2. The next day, I swapped the shotgun for an MP5 that I looted from the gun store and decided to head into the city to start looting the neighborhoods for any padded clothing. To quote the majority of my subs, this wouldn't be a Preds video without an unnecessary car crash. And after totaling my second car in one week, I decided to take a big risk and head into West Point on foot. This actually wasn't too bad as I made it to my initial base before 1, and was able to use that as an FOB while moving into West Point. In a stroke of good luck, I was able to find padded pants in the first house I looked into, after dealing with a small party inside of course. I hit up a couple other houses and was able to find some baseball bats and a cooking pot to make soup in before retreating back to the shed to get ready for the next day. J37 was much the same, albeit with a little more combat. I was routinely running into an issue where I could only loot one or two houses every block because of the amount of zombies that were roaming in the area, so I gave up and eventually just decided that I was going to spend the rest of the day trying to put a dent in the hordes around the houses. I did manage to find a van in pretty good condition with the main issue being that it was out of fuel, but it shouldn't be much of an issue since I could siphon some from other vehicles. Not too much happened outside of that, so here's some footage of me taking on one of the hordes with an MP5.
I woke up on the morning of day 38 to easily the worst weather storm I've ever experienced in Project Zomboid. Clocking in at minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which even indoors was still hitting me hard enough to give me hypothermia if I didn't get a fire going soon. I chose to cut my losses and head back to base, almost killing myself again by choosing to sprint to slow the rate I became hypothermic, which left me completely exhausted in the middle of the woods in a blizzard. Luckily I was able to make it back by early afternoon, light a fire, and start to recover. And the storm was actually worse on day 39 than the previous day, so I decided to stick close to home and work on the wall some more, taking breaks at the fireplace whenever I became hypothermic, making for slow progress, but progress nonetheless. I spent the next two days working on the perimeter before running out of logs early in the afternoon of day 41. To wrap up, I had two goals. Step one was obviously to chop down a ton of trees for the remaining logs, and step two was to go out and grab a semi with a trailer. I remember seeing a trailer by the warehouses in the southeast, and a semi was over by Twiggy's. I wrapped up the rest of the day by reading some more skill books. And after waking up on the morning of day 42, I began the long journey to Twiggy's on foot, once again sprinting to slow the rate I froze over. After reaching Twiggy's, I spent a good hour or so clearing out all the zombies in the area while battling the fact that I was freezing. Luckily for me, the truck was in great condition, so I fueled it up and was able to head back that same day. The next morning, I hopped in the big rig and headed out to the warehouse across from the gas station. After pulling up, I got to work clearing out the immediate area so that I could attach the trailer safely, which was actually pretty smooth. I got the trailer back at around 2pm and warmed up before spending the rest of the day chopping down logs to finish up the walls. And after waking up late the next day, I decided to spend my time throwing logs into the trailer so that I could bulk build out the remainder of the wall. On the morning of day 45, I walked outside at the coldest day that I'd experienced so far. Minus 97 degrees Fahrenheit with a minus 20 wind chill, making it feel like minus 117 outside. Even with the horrendous conditions, the goal stayed the same. I needed to get this base wrapped up so I could move on to my next goal, so I got to work. Progress was slow, but by early evening I had hit Carpentry 4, so I decided to stop there for the day and work on reading Carpentry Volume 3, which took me the rest of the night and all of the following day to read. On day 47, it was back to work, at least until the early evening when I, once again, ran out of logs, which means it's back to chopping trees, hopefully for the final time. The only thing worth noting on day 48 is that I pushed the limits way too much when chopping trees and wound up getting a nasty cold after spending the entire day outside. Luckily I was able to get rid of the sickness overnight and wrap up my efforts of finishing the wall on day 49. Also, I just realized I haven't talked about what I'm doing with the fireplace, to, you know, stay alive. It'll go something like this. If I keep the fire on 24 hours a day, I'll run out of fuel in days or will be stuck on a loop of constantly chopping trees to sustain myself. So what I do is wait until I become freezing or hypothermic, then run inside, use a lighter or matches, and light a fire. Standing closest to the fire boosts my temp up to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. I can use this to get rid of my hypothermia, at which case I immediately go to sleep. I can get a pretty decent chunk of sleep before I wake up freezing, depending on the temperature outside. Once I wake up, I turn off the fire to conserve fuel, until I either reach hypothermic again, or it's time to go to sleep. If there isn't a storm going on, I'll do a quick workout, which also heats up your character, before trying to sleep through the night. Anyway. Now that the base is secured, it's time to work on my own survival. I need some rain collectors, a padded jacket, and some fuel. All of this just to say, it's time to head back into the city. Oh, it's also negative 102, so that's nice. 
After getting to the gas station, I was already hypothermic, and to make matters worse, there were about a dozen zombies shambling around the gas station. After ditching them in the car wash, I was able to fill up the truck, refill the generator, and fill both gas cans before heading back to base. I made it back later in the afternoon and began thinking of a plan for rain collectors. My biggest concern right now is that I need garbage bags. My choices are pretty simple here. I can either head back into town and start scavenging through houses, or I can check out some of the nearby houses and pray they have garbage cans sitting around. After looting one house, I came to the conclusion that I'm just an idiot and this would be so much easier if I just drove to the school and looted the garbage cans around there. By the end of the night, I walked away with close to 16 garbage bags, some more loot, and some cigs. And after building three rain collectors and a composter on day 51, I spent the rest of my time reading through all of the magazines that I collected from the school the previous day. Next upon the agenda is building a workbench, which will give me access to more weapons and much better armor. The only holdup? I need metalworking too, and because of this, I spent the first half of the day grinding out the first two metalworking levels. Now a normal player would go, okay, sweet, let's go make things, but the min-max sweat lower to me decided it'd be a better idea to head back to the school to see Metalworking Volume 2 was there. And that being said, I plan to make a day out of it tomorrow and spent the remainder of the day working on my mechanic skill. Waking up on the morning of day 53, I decided to test the waters and take a jog down to the school to see how far I could make it and how cold it truly was. I kept the temperature screen up to monitor my body temperature and measure the effects of sprinting, which played a huge part in keeping me warm. Now it is worth noting in this instance that there isn't a storm going on, this is just a normal day. When I finally reached the school, I found it completely overrun with zombies, so I got to work. This went on for some time, which wasn't the plan at all. And to make matters worse, Metalworking 2 was nowhere to be found in the library. With one last ditch effort, I spent a few hours searching the cabinets and storage locations in each classroom until finally finding volume 2 on the second floor. Now that I had what I came for, I could jog back to base and go to sleep. Days 54 through 57 may look a little wonky because I actually stream these days. If you'd like to see the full stream, I'll have it linked in the top right corner now. I spent all of day 54 reading the next metalworking book so that I could get boosted XP from creating the workbench and all of the gear I'd be making after. On day 55, I finished up volume 2 and finally crafted a workbench, which I placed in the garage. After placing it, I moved anything related to metalworking or scrap weapons and armor into the workbench so it was all located in one place. On day 56, I went on a small looting run into the city. Caught a huge break when I found a jeep in pretty good condition, so I ran back to base to grab a gas can, filled up the jeep, and took it into town to fight some zombies. The notes I have written down for day 57 just say shotgun rampage through city, and I really can't think of a better way to sum it up than that, so here you go. I think I have another welding mask too. Forgot that I lost it a while back. You should actually be able to lose him right here. Let's do this. Oh! Yeah, the damage on these monsters is not good. It sucks, but it's gonna help me. Yeah, it's gonna be aiming forward at least. I guess it's really good to be scoring right now. 
Actually looking pretty good level-wise. Level -wise. Just pulling down this way. She has guns on. It's like a ranger. The following day, I decided to answer a very important question as on stream. With that, I grabbed a Molotov and headed into the city. The big piece to be careful with is that I just want to burn the zombies in the area. I'm not trying to throw a gender reveal party or anything like that. This is a true risk versus reward method since I'm losing out on a ton of potential loot from these zombies, but it's also negative 110 out and I'm getting desperate. And after spending a few hours pulling zombies from the city and drawing them into the flames, I confirmed that zombies that are on fire will not, in fact, warm you up. This is the biggest pain of the game right now. I can't just sit in the city, I have to keep heading back to base multiple times per day whenever I get cold, stand by the fire for an hour, and then head back out before repeating the process. After warming up, I headed back out with the goal of clearing out all of the stragglers hanging out on the road near my base and connecting them to the wandering horde of burning zombies. Of course, this is way easier said than done. I managed to get around 100 or so grouped up, but became hypothermic before I could lead them into each other. When I woke up on day 59, there was a blizzard going on outside, meaning there wasn't much I was going to be able to do today. To make matters worse, the fireplace was almost out of fuel, only holding around 11 hours or so left in it. Not wanting to stray too far from my base until the storm passed, I chose to spend my day gathering more logs for the fireplace. Most of my axes were broken at this point, but I did have four hand axes that I could use, so I grabbed them and got to work. Also, if you're wondering why I'm selecting single logs at a time to add as fuel, it's because the game's returned and doesn't let you just fill from the ground into fuel. And since your character can only hold four logs at a time, it won't let you just pick up four and move into the fire before continuing, meaning it stops you after you pick up the initial logs. As much as I'd like to see a fix for it, let's be real, we'll be lucky if we sue him by 2030. Anyway, by the end of the day, I managed to stack up around 200 hours of fuel, which should keep me good for close to a month if I don't abuse it too much. Hopefully, I'd be able to find a padded jacket and wouldn't need it at all. I woke up late next morning and set to work finishing what I had started the previous day. Don't let the screen fool you. Storm had stopped for now, but it was still close to 100 below zero, so hypothermia was inevitable. Luckily for me, Storm held off until I was able to track down some burning zombies and bait them into the larger horde. This was a big win for me since now that they were stacked, I just had to grab the stragglers, which was just a matter of pressing Q enough times in succession. I ran out of time after becoming hypothermic again and chose to just head home and end the day, hopefully finishing the project tomorrow. The next morning, I drove out in the jeep and managed to round up most of the zombies hanging around the road. Day 62 was the big day, but knowing at the fact that I'd spent almost a week on this project, I finally just said fuck it and grabbed a campfire kit, some wood, and began the long drawn out process of baiting zombies through it. This was actually super easy, but very time consuming as you just have to sit around driving back and forth. Occasionally I'd have to drive down the road a ways to corral the zombies back in. And I'll show that process now so that you can all suffer with me. By around noon, I had managed to burn roughly 250 zombies out of the way, which should help with the roads a bit. Unfortunately for me, the storm won't let up and it's making it near impossible to travel more than a few cells away from my base. To celebrate, I went back to base and built three drill planks. This doesn't seem all that important now, but trust me, eventually I'm going to start running out of matches and lighters and these are going to be a godsend. On day 63, I decided to test my luck and see how far I could run before getting hypothermia. The answer is not far. To make matters worse, I stretched myself way too thin and ended up with a nasty cold again. To counter this, I stoked the fire, made some soup, and knocked it on the chair, which for the second time this playthrough, cured my sickness seemingly overnight. Day 64 was another looting run. It didn't start off great, but finally, after weeks of searching, I walked into a random house to find a padded jacket in the bedroom. Now all I need is a scarf, and I'll be about as set as I can be. For any of you wondering why the padded jacket and pants were so important that I just spent like a month looking for them, it's because I can sit inside a house now without relying on a fireplace. 
and this really opens up the map for me, at least for the next few months since I can recover in houses before heading back out. They're practically essential for traveling outside of your immediate location. Now that I have most of the clothing taken care of, I switch my focus to mechanics. Since I've been blessed with Dale Earnhardt's driving ability, I managed to wreck two cars already and the Jeep and Semi aren't sitting so great right now. In order to fix them up, I needed mechanics level 5 so I can start grabbing engine parts, so that became my next goal. I spent the day grinding out the second mechanics level and reading the mechanics volume 2 book. Day 66 was spent wrapping up the next mechanics book before his cleaning up around the base some more. Now that I actually have adequate clothing, I wanted to head into the city and do some more looting. I started off in the northwestern end of town by the school where I found a car in really good condition. After accidentally honking while hot wearing the car, I dealt with the zombies nearby before connecting both vehicles and towing it into town to use as a makeshift extra trailer for now. Looking back, this was probably way more trouble than it was worth. I had to keep the car in first gear, which only pulled more zombies over to me. What unfolded was an incredibly combat heavy day, while I tried to just keep hordes away from the cars. This is really where the padded clothes shine, since I can just retreat inside of houses, warm up and rest up, and then head back out to keep fighting. Around 4pm I was ridiculously tired and still sitting in the middle of West Point. I decided to try my luck and hide out in a house to test my survival by sleeping on a chair in an upstairs hallway. My thought process was that if I woke up hypothermic, I could just exercise with the clothes on, which should shoot my body temperature right back up. I woke up on day 68 a little cold, but still in one piece, and most importantly, not sick or hypothermic. This was huge since I didn't have to spend a good 3 hours or so just driving back down to West Point. The only predicament I'm in at this point is that I don't have many weapons. I have my shotgun, but other than that I'm down to one short blunt weapon right now and a couple knives. I knew there was a hardware store nearby, so I chose to target that as my first stop. At least, that was the plan. What actually ended up happening was that I walked downstairs and fought my way out of the house. After getting out, I made an effort to drop off some gear at my vehicles, which ended up almost getting me killed. Thinking on my feet, I started up my jeep and pushed the zombies out of the way, which gave me enough space to make a run for it. After this, I said fuck it and whipped out the shotgun to start shredding through some of the zombies. All this really ended up doing was attracting even more zombies over because, at least in terms of damage, the Mossberg is the equivalent of throwing a stress ball at a sumo wrestler. After almost dying at the hardware store, I gave up on the day and just decided to get back to my cars and head home. The big issue with that is I was freezing and couldn't find my car. I spent the next few hours dipping and ducking into any house that I could to warm up before zombies would break in and force me out. The drive home was anything but enjoyable. I was hypothermic and moving at a whopping 15 miles an hour while also trying to dodge hordes of zombies with both cars. This almost got me killed and I had to unhook the jeep before making it back to base in critical condition. The next morning, I hopped back in my new car and ran out to grab the jeep. After bringing it back to base, I spent the majority of the day organizing my kitchen after bringing all the loot inside. When I wasn't doing that, I was refilling almost 20 water bottles for my rain collectors. Day 70 saw me waking up late in the afternoon and finally committing to grinding out mechanics. I chose the semi since I'd already read the Intermediate Mechanics magazine and spent my day uninstalling and reinstalling all of the components of the truck before catching another nasty cold. Initially, I wasn't worried about it until I woke up the next morning still sick. Not really sure what to do at this point, so I made some soup and sat by the fire while I read more skill books, which somehow did the trick, and by 9.30, I had gotten over my cold. Now, a normal person wouldn't chance it and would play way more conservatively, but we don't have a lot of time to just sit around the base, so I grabbed my mechanics tools and headed back out to the semi. Day 72 was also more mechanics work. I got sick again, which has become kind of the norm at this point, but it didn't really bother me since I had recovery done to a science. You'd think at this point my immune system would be strong enough that I wouldn't get nasty colds every day, but apparently I have the immune system of a fucking toddler. 
Day 73 was another realization moment for me. I'm down to under two days of fuel in the fireplace, and at this point, I'm going to run out of axes before gathering enough fuel to keep me alive. And after sitting on it for a bit, I came up with two options. Option one, I could head into town and start disassembling all the furniture in the area, bring back the planks and scrap wood and use that. Or option two, I could go around to the fire stations and hope to find some axes that I could use to gather logs from the surrounding area. I still had a couple hand axes in my arsenal, but those were going to be used as my last resort. Since it was still September, I figured it would be best to go looting and try to find any wood axes to use. First place on my list was the West Point hardware store, so I hopped in my car and began making my way over. When I reached the hardware store, I found a fire department truck and was able to loot an axe out of it before dipping into a house in order to warm up. I accidentally brought some zombies with me and used the house as a bait area to lure them in through windows to clear them out. The hardware store itself was kind of a major letdown. I was expecting a ton of tools and weapons and instead got food and some seeds. Next up was the police station, which I realize doesn't have anything to do with axes, but I'm here so let's do it. Even with Firearms 41 being the more balanced weapon pack, I still managed to find an AK in the armory, so now I have two of those. Now I do have one more hardware location to check, which is right next to the food market and the post office. And not many people know of this because there's no actual POI for it on the Project Zomboid map, but if you look, you can see it right in the dead center of them. There's some small shelving areas, but it's not listed as an actual store. After working my way into the area, I managed to loot one of the shelves where I found a wooden axe. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to loot the rest of the building due to the cold and the zombies moving in. I'd have to come back another day and wrap up here. I spent all of day 74 organizing the loot from the hardware store, police station, and what I was able to grab from that section in the food market. Days 75 through 77 were spent using the entire wooden axe, farming logs to add as fuel to the fireplace. After three days of work, I had roughly 30 days worth of fuel to work with. This gave me a little bit to work with since I could estimate that each wooden axe would provide me with about a month of fuel for my fireplace, which also equates to around 120 logs that, once again, I had to manually select one at a time because Zomboid struggles to work how you'd expect it to, and just because I had to suffer through this aneurysm-inducing monotony, you do too. Next upon the agenda was siphoning fuel out of the broken vehicles so I could store some and refuel the generator. The biggest takeaway for the day is that it was around negative 130 Fahrenheit outside. I'm back to becoming hypothermic in minutes, which really sucks. On day 78, I woke up late and rushed down to the little hardware store. After showing up, I had to lure a bunch of zombies out of the building, which was a little difficult since I forgot to grab any weapons. That was until I looted the shelf and found a machete, which I used to clear out the remaining horde. After that was over with, I finally looted the rest of the building, finding some more crafting items, a couple hammers, and a sledgehammer, but unfortunately no more axes, which was kind of a bummer. The only thing worth noting on day 79 was when I went back into town for a looting run through the neighborhoods and ended up getting stuck on the second floor of a house where I held off something like 20 zombies on the stairwell. Definitely a stressful moment, but one I've kind of become accustomed to with this game. On day 80, I did some general cleanup around the base. First thing I did was shred up all the leather jackets to give me close to 100 leather strips that I could use for armor. 
Then I went and disassembled all of my electronic junk, giving me just under two levels in electrical. All I need at this point is propane for the torch. After that, I can start crafting armor and weapons. Because it was so late at this point, I just took some sleeping pills and planned to head back into West Point in the morning. Which is exactly what I did on day 81. Except it didn't work out nearly as I expected it to. My main strategy was just to run through the neighborhoods looking for propane. When that didn't work because I was getting too cold too quickly, I started heading back when I got the hunch to take a side road, which led me to a small shack that I had looted probably within the first week or two of this playthrough. When I got inside, I found an industrial propane tank with a tiny little bit of fuel left in it. I took that back to base and, after warming up, went to finally work on some armor. Until I realized I was missing my welder's mask. You see, my mask had actually fallen off during stream when I tripped over a fence back on day 54, 55, whatever it was. At the time, I was wearing the mask for the extra insulation and wind resistance to help with the cold, but clearly that was a mistake. Day 82 saw me heading all the way to the southeast of West Point to hit up the self-storage area. I didn't have a real reason to come here other than I wanted to work on grinding out becoming desensitized and need a large indoor area that would also have some loot. The big problem was that I forgot a sledgehammer and all of the doors were locked, forcing me to have to break down a door. actually ended up turning out to be one of the best decisions I've made so far in this run through, as I was able to find a sledgehammer to open up the locked units with. In one of those units, I found another padded jacket, a wool hat, and a scarf, which covered the last exposed parts of me. The only other thing of importance today was that at 6.20 when I kissed a tree with my front bumper. The next day saw me back in West Point neighborhoods with the same intention. Relatively early on, I almost got myself killed trying to fight indoors to prevent myself from becoming hypothermic. Luckily, I was in full firefighter gear and managed to pull a Glenn from The Walking Dead. You guys remember that prison scene when he just puts on riot gear and just kind of shoves his way through like 500 zombies? God, that shit used to be amazing. What? What happened there? Anyway, I was able to storm through like 10 zombies and walked away unscathed. Aside from that, it was pretty much business as usual. Until I had to jump out of a window with glass in it and gave myself a deep wound in my left hand, forcing me to fall back to my base. Over the next two days, I went back to chopping trees and fueling the fireplace while I waited for my stitched hand to heal. By the end of day 85, I was up to over 1100 hours of fuel in the fireplace, which should keep me good for almost two months. On day 86, I pulled one of my original cars back to base so that I could continue working on mechanics. There was also a police cruiser that I had seen back at the police station, and I wanted to go scoop that up to use as parts for my Jeep. Obviously, to fix up the Jeep, we need engine parts, and to do that, we need to hit mechanics level 6. After hitting level 4, I went back inside and spent some time becoming Gordon Ramsay before knocking out by the fire. I do need Mechanics Volume 3, so I plan to head back into the city tomorrow and get that taken care of. On the morning of day 87, I was able to remove the stitch and bandage the remaining scratch. After that, I hopped in my car and headed down to the school, where I managed to find both Mechanics Volume 3 and Volume 4. On the way back up, I hit two zombies, which put the nail in the coffin on my car. Forcing me to walk all the way back to base, alone. I spent the rest of the day reading Mechanics Volume 3 before wrapping up at around 5am the next morning. I woke up at 7pm the next day and grinded out some more mechanics skill before ending the day early. I'd actually spend the next week or so grinding mechanics until I finally hit level 6 on the evening of day 94. After which, I knocked out mechanics volume 4 before heading to bed and waking up late on the 11th. I didn't really know what to do at this point in time since it was too late to head into the city, so I took some sleeping pills and woke up early on day 96. On October 12th, I woke up, threw on my warmest clothing, and began the long journey into West Point on foot. This was made even worse by the fact that it was minus 130 outside, and I was becoming hypothermic in less than an hour if I wasn't sprinting. The fall off with that is that I spend all my time sprinting, I'm going to become exhausted, and will end up getting myself killed. By the time I found some viable cars, it was pretty late. I was exerted and hypothermic. And because of that, it took me a while to finagle the zombies around the area until I was able to fuel up a Cosby mobile and hop inside as a zombie grabbed me. 
I did get insanely lucky here and managed to hotwire the vehicle on the first go, which allowed me to get out in one piece and head back to base. The next day, I grabbed the generator and both gas cans and headed down to the gas station to fuel up. Nothing special really happened today. It just took a while for me to get fuel because of the zombies in the area, and given how cold it was, I tried baiting them into the gas station, but that didn't work, so I just lit them up with the MP5. On day 98, I grabbed some dirt, cleared out a room on the second floor, and began building out my interior garden. This took most of the day since I only had two buckets and I had to keep walking outside to refill them. I chose to grow a mix of potatoes and cabbages for now, but would probably look to expand as I found more room. On the morning of day 99, I leveled up my electronic skill and headed back to the school to find the next book since I only had volumes 1 and 3. After I got back to base early that afternoon, I spent the rest of the day reading volume 2. Alrighty, we finally reached day 100. A long, arduous journey, but glad we're here. So far, I have managed to fully stock my kitchen with enough food to last for months. I have enough guns to make everyone south of Mississippi bust a nut, a collection of various blunt and bladed weapons that'll keep me busy for probably the remainder of this series, and a bunch of other shit laying around somewhere. So far, I have 1644 kills, with short blunt weapons taking the bulk of them at 548. Oh, and here are my skills so far. Originally, I had planned to do 500 days of cryogenic winter, back in September while I was recording this. I'm a decent way through part 2, but decided to hold off on it. But not because it's too difficult. I'm actually set up very well to survive for at least the next 100 days with my current safe house. The true reasoning is I just don't know how to keep it entertaining, to be honest. It feels like at least 12 to 14 hours of each day are spent pressed against the fireplace so I don't die from hypothermia. From October through March, you basically can only be outside of the house for approximately an hour in-game, fully geared before you become hypothermic. It just wasn't fun to play, and I thought it'd be boring to show you guys. I still have a lot of the footage and the save file, so if this is something you'd like me to continue, by all means let me know and we can definitely keep it going. I just didn't want to spend close to 75 hours working on each episode for it to mainly consist of me sitting around a fire, smoking cigs, and staring at the ceiling. But that's going to do it for me guys. A big thanks to my YouTube members who give me the opportunity to make this kind of content for all of you, and as always, thanks for stopping by.